Welcome everyone to the May meeting of West Colfax Community Association. We appreciate you getting up early to be with us once again. We've got what we think is a great agenda for you today. Uh, lots of positive things happening in the corridor. Uh, we're gonna try to get through it uh, and get you out of here by nine o'clock. Uh, we've been pretty successful at that. We really appreciate you showing up um, and, and being here. Um, the elected officials and the, 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 everybody that's here. And we'll, we'll, we'll run through the, the local jurisdictions in just a minute. I would encourage you, if you haven't gone to the West Colfax website recently, westcolfax.org, go do that uh, and just look around a little bit. There, there's a lot of good stuff there. There's an archive of past meetings. Uh, there's a calendar of, of events. Uh, there's a lot of resources. Uh, you can see some of it that, that that is being flashed up in front of you. There's there's news that you know if you've got things that you'd like to have posted up, send that to info at westcolfax.org. Um, and and I, I'd also tell you to just uh, we we're talking a little bit before we started. When you when you first go to the website, there's a video of of uh, our prior meetings when we used to meet in the in the old theater, and 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 we're. We're going to get back to that at some point where uh, you, you, we're going to be uh, probably in a hybrid environment where we'll allow you know people to come and get together and network uh, like like we the, the good old days uh, and, and still allow a, a a virtual option for those that you know find find it convenient and efficient to to come like we're doing here. So so stay posted and we'll we'll, we'll try to move that along as best we can. And with that, let's. Uh, Let's move into the local jurisdictions. And I know we have uh, uh, some folks here. Uh, I, I see some uh, Jeffco um, County commissioners. So um, we'll maybe start there. And uh, I, I don't know who would like to go first. Maybe Tracy, I, I see you up there. Great, good morning. Um, I'm happy to bring you good news this morning. So thank you, Andy and Leslie, for letting me share the good news. And the good news is Boy, our world in COVID and um, uh, restrictions has sure changed in the last week, hasn't it? So um, the best news is, is that our COVID numbers are starting to go down. We had been seeing them increase pretty steadily. Now we're seeing them start to go down again. We are at, in a seven day rate, we're at 113.9 per 100,000 in new cases. And for 113, and for a while there, we were over 200. So we are getting this under control. We're tracking hospitalization rates now. That's the metric that we're tracking. We want to be between one and two. And we, um, as of yesterday morning, we were at 1.53. A little high, but we're still right there. So we moved into the clear uh, range on the dial on Sunday. Um, and what, what does that mean? It means our restrictions are, for the most part, clear. There are still some places that we have restrictions. We're going to be watching our hospitalization rates pretty closely this next 90 days, and we could have what's called a snapback to blue if we need to, but hopefully we're going to have this all in control. And Andy, talk about vaccinations. Great. Thank you, and uh, thank you everyone for uh, being here this morning. I'm Andy Kerr, uh, Jefferson County Commissioner for District 2, uh, which is the central part of uh, Jeffco. Uh, so vaccines, the, the key to everything is getting enough people vaccinated. And at this point, everyone who is 12 years old and older is eligible uh, for the vaccine. And uh, the, the numbers in Jeffco are really good around people getting vaccinated. So for our residents who are 70 years or older, over 95% of everyone 70 and over is vaccinated, which is wonderful. And we all know that the, that is the age group that has been most uh, vulnerable uh, to severe health uh, impacts and death uh, from COVID. Um, overall, we're almost at 70% of Jeffco residents um, uh, over 12 who are eligible, so 12 and over, it's, it's just recently changed from 16 and over to now 12 and over. So uh, those, uh, that percentage has, has uh, 
vary just just a little bit, but uh, some uh, somewhere around 56% of everyone in Jeffco uh, who is eligible are fully vaccinated. So those numbers are great and getting better. Uh, any uh, it's actually very easy to get uh, a vaccination at this point. Uh, the uh, Jefferson County Public Health and working with the State Health Department have uh, mobile <laughs> units going out to uh, schools. Um, trying to remember which uh, school today. I believe they were at Alameda High School yesterday. And I don't have it on my calendar which school they'll be at today, but they, uh, they're doing a, a series of uh, school visits and uh, it's, it's actually pretty easy to find a uh, vaccine. As our public health director, uh, Do Dr. Don Comstock uh, says repeatedly, the, the first vaccine that you can get is the right vaccine for you. So uh, all, all three of the varieties of vaccines uh, are working extremely well. Um, obviously those uh, 12 to 16 um, can only are only eligible for the uh, Pfizer. Uh, so they you you need to make sure uh, with the younger people that they're getting the, the correct uh, vaccine. Um, the, the one thing that is maybe not good news around vaccines is that the data is still showing that there are uh, uh, fairly large gaps in, in various populations uh, across Jefferson County and across the state in the nation uh, for that matter. Um, our Latinx uh, population here in Jefferson County uh, is much less likely uh, to have been vaccinated so a lot of the uh, vaccine efforts and the mobile units are going to be uh, targeting uh, going into our neighborhoods uh, with a higher Latinx uh, population to try and uh, even that out uh, a little bit. And um, I did also uh, part of the, uh, the vaccination efforts and uh, the targeting um, is uh, vaccinating the homebound, so people who are homebound and not able to go out and get uh, a vaccine, maybe from their doctor or their pharmacy or something like that. Um, there's also outreach uh, to, to those folks. Uh, the one other thing that I wanted to uh, mention today, I'm sure many of you have heard that there were two cycling deaths here in Jefferson County, uh, one here in Lakewood, um, over uh, on Sunday and then um, a 12 year old down in the Ken Carl uh, area on Friday and just really want to get the message out around uh, driving safely and, and making sure that we're we're sharing the road and uh, everyone gets gets to where they're going and gets home alive. So uh, thanks for having us today and uh, Trace uh, uh, Leslie has a few other updates. And I'll, I'll be brief. Thanks so much, Commissioner Kerr and Commissioner Kraft-Tharp. I also put our contact information in the chat if you'd like to get in touch with us and our Board of County Commissioner meetings are almost every Tuesday at 8 a.m. if you're ever interested in, in talking with us directly uh, or you can email us as well. Super quick, we just wanted to let you know that the uh, county is in the middle of strategic planning. And we really want to thank our community members and stakeholders, a number of you, uh, participated in community groups that we held to get feedback on our mission, our vision, our value statements. And we've since identified several core areas with your help, with the help of county electeds and others, ranging from health and safe, thriving communities, enhancing inclusive of community engagement. That is actually a new area that we're spotlighting. We think it's really important to keep that two-way conversation um, alive and thriving. And it's important to hear what you value because that helps to inform the budget. Protecting natural resources, strengthening infrastructure, being an employer of choice, and, and much more. The strategic plan helps to inform our budget process, which is the second piece we wanted to share with you today too. As you know, Jeffco has been operating in a very tight financial environment over the last several years. We still face budget challenges, especially as we see dollars coming into the county that are over our Tabor cap that we then return to taxpayers, while other counties 
are able to invest those dollars in roads, bridges, infrastructure, other services and programs that are core uh, to uh, enhancing our quality of life here in Jefferson County and across the state. I want to give a huge shout out to our Colorado congressional delegation, Colorado, especially Congressman Perlmutter, Congressman Naguz. I know Ashley is on the call this morning for the incredible work that they did in terms of bringing dollars to Colorado and specifically Jeffco, Lakewood, and our surrounding cities. Uh, to help with COVID response and recovery. So our budget process work is underway. We'll use our strategic plan to help guide uh, how we best allocate and strategically um, assign those funds across the board. And we're also happy to announce that Jefferson County uh, just received another $13 million or is poised to receive an additional $13 million in housing assistance. And if you talk with any one of our food banks or nonprofits like the Action Center uh, or others, they will tell you that the need for rental assistance, housing assistance, food assistance and more has not gone away. So we continue to work very closely with them as members of the Jeffco Integrated Food Task Force. And that's a quick update on where we're at with some of the county business. So thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy, Andy, and Leslie. It, it, you make it easy for me because you, you three just, uh, I, <laughs> you're, you're very coordinated, it shows, and, and we appreciate the work you do on our behalf. Uh, before we move into Lakewood uh, City Council and the update from the mayor, do we have any other state elected officials that uh, are with us today? Okay. Uh, I know we have at least a couple of uh, Lakewood uh, City Council folks, and if you uh, have anything you'd like to chime in with, uh, please do. You know, I always defer to the mayor, <laughs> but I will say real quick, when we were talking about the funding dollars, um, I'm part of um, a group that just just received that too. And they are thrilled because they're gonna be able to hire two new teachers that can come on and help with preschool kids. Um, so I like how the money's being spread around. It's helping in all sorts of different areas. So that's just great. I just wanted to throw that out there. So now I will defer to the mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Amy, no report. I defer to the mayor as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Randy. Thank you for being here today. Uh, and with that, uh, Mayor Paul, I think the floor is yours. Great. Well, good morning, everyone. And, uh, you know, it continues to, to be a, a great time in our community, starting to see some events. Was able to stop by Mint and Sarah for their art, little art festival and crawfish broil. And so it's, it's coming and appreciate everybody's hard work. And while we're not quite there, we've been able to tackle a lot of this together. And I'm certainly proud of proud of our community. And I wanna to touch on, on the partnerships and, and thank Ashley for being here. Um, the opportunity to work with Congressman Perlmutter and really his attentiveness to, to listen to the different community needs and our county commissioners. So just so everyone knows, as we look at different stimulus dollars, there's a couple of different opportunities that do um, lend themselves for partnerships with our congressional delegation. And so we've submitted different projects and one of them is a look at West Colfax and pedestrian safety and sidewalks west of Wadsworth. We certainly know that we're gonna have a, a, a big grant for east of Wadsworth, but we've submitted some information to look at west of Wadsworth. So that's, that's incredibly important. And we're also working with uh, 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 different groups on homelessness. And so the county's really you know, kind of convened all the cities and our city managers have been working hard to look at different opportunities for some more permanent, per, permanent services for our homeless. And uh, uh, the commissioners have, have led that with, with an ask to different groups from our, our federal delegation to our state delegation now. And uh, hopefully we'll have some good news moving forward, whether or not those, those things get funded through the state or the feds, we won't know for some time but it, it's good that we have a plan and, and excited to see where those go forward. Previous city council meetings, uh, we continue to discuss, you'll probably see a couple different ballot initiatives related to uh, taxation on marijuana, taxation on marijuana cultivation, as well as a potential uh, tobacco tax. So keep an eye on those going forward. We had an update on our slash facility, which is another 
um, opportunity that we're working with the county and the other cities, looking like it will be back where it used to be, which is kind of deja vu out on Rooney Road. And, and what had happened was the previous slash facility was being utilized on open space land, which is in conflict of what those dollars can be used for. So a land swap took place where the county had some general purpose land out there that they swapped with the parkland, which now enables them to again, look at having the fat slash facility, which will be really important. We know that's something that the community has wanted to see for some time. Um, coming up this week, there's a couple of things that are, I think important to this community. We have our community grant program, which is our, our opportunity to help fund some of our nonprofits. It's a hundred thousand dollar program. There is a recommendation for 40 West Arts on that to receive some dollars as well as the neighborhood participation program. There's a Two Creeks project as well as a, a WCCA a 40 West project. And then this one is something that kind of, you know, it's interesting how the market ebb and flows, but, but as you all know, you saw a lot of gas stations and there's a lot of interest for gas stations on West Colfax. Uh, this community has worked really hard to, to vision things that are different. And so there'll be a, a second reading to look at how do we better regulate gas stations uh, along the corridor. So I would encourage you to uh, engage on those if you're able to. Um, we've had the opportunity uh, to, to try to connect with RCG and we just haven't been able to, to strike that yet, but Bill and I are, are in contact. And for those that don't know, RCG is, is the group that owns Westland. And we've certainly made a commitment to, to get them to the table to talk about what that future holds. So Bill and I are, are working on that. And we also had an interesting kind of touch point with some folks that are interested in the RTD property on Oak Street and, and former mayor of Golden Marjorie Sloan is now the RTD district representative. And she reached out to put together a meeting with Bill and I. So um, I'm not quite sure uh, when that'll take place, but that's all good stuff. It's getting people to the table as we move forward. Uh, Mayor's Inspiration Awards is a program that we've had for the last couple of years. And so we have a youth category, an individual, an organization, and uh, in a memorandum. And so if, if you'd like to do that, you can go to the city website for the criteria. Uh, July 15th is the, the end date for submittal. And <clears throat> we also, I guess last but certainly not least, for, for municipalities, it's an election year, as I touched on the potential ballot initiatives, but there'll be a city council election. So I'd really encourage you to get to know the, the folks that are out there and, and running and putting themselves out. It's, these are always important. All things are local and, and there's a lot at stake here for the future of the city. So with that, if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try to tackle them. I don't see any. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, next up on our agenda is Lakewood uh, Economic Development, and I think uh, Vanessa Zarate is with us, and she's a member of our board as well. Um, good morning. I will be quick because I am part of the larger present, or I have a larger presentation today, but there's a few things I wanted to announce. Ziggy's is open. Go see them. Go say hello. Go um, try out all the goods that they have. And as you're heading that way, head back on to the mill. They have opened their new movies and classic car museum. Um, so lots of Jurassic Park cars. And I was telling Robert, I don't know, but he nerded out over some of the cars. So um, go see that. They have a vaccination clinic. They're doing a blood drive. So head on out to the mill. There's a lot going on. And while you're there, visit the shops, visit the businesses, say hello. One of the big things I just wanted to let everyone know, we've been pushing it out pretty hard, but the Colfax Marathon this year will be in October. And due to there being a Broncos game on race weekend, the marathon will run on Saturday this year. So Colfax Marathon 2020 will be run on Saturday, October 16th. Hope, goal, plan is for everything to run like it normally has just on Saturday instead of Sunday this year, they're switching the days and they'll run the 5K on Sunday. But Saturday, October 16th for 2020, and then the hope plan is to move back to May for next year. But Saturday, October 16th this year, we'll be out there cheering and, and saying hello to everyone. 
I just wanted to throw a last shout out to, we talked last month about the programs that we've started in my office. That website is now up and the applications are live. I will put it in the chat as well, but all of those applications and programs can be found at lakewood.org slash economic development programs. Not short, but easy to remember. Thank you, Vanessa. And I know you'll be back with us a little bit later for part of the, the formal program. So thank you for what you and your, your team does. Uh, and she does a great job of keeping our board updated each month on what's going on as well. So lots of, lots of stuff happening. Uh, with that, we'll move to uh, 40 West Arts. Uh, and I think uh, Liz Black is with us this morning. Everybody, great to see everyone. And um, just uh, as Mayor Adam Paul said, the district and the city of Lakewood are really starting to open back up again. It's really been lovely to see these new events and things taking place and kind of re-emerging in our beautiful city. So I'll just share an overview with all of you of what's happening in the district. This weekend, Saturday, May 22nd, between 9 and noon, we are doing a 40 West Art Line Spring Cleaning Day. It's a wonderful opportunity to volunteer with friends and community members, and it's totally outdoors, so really COVID safe. We will be updating some ground murals and a fenced art installation just in an attempt to keep continue to beautify and maintain the 40 West Art Line, which is a wonderful asset to us all. And in that vein, there's so much going on along the art line, but the one big thing I'll share is that we do have a new call out for an artist to complete a community ground mural project. So we need someone with the skill set of both an artist who can paint large scale murals, but also someone who can work with a community project and have volunteers on site helping. If you or anyone you know fits that bill, please don't hesitate to share this call far and wide so that we can get as many wonderful applicants as possible. And that call closes on May 23rd. In the district as well, Friday, May 28th, we have the kickoff for the Keep Kids Creating Art Benefit Gala. It's a silent auction exhibition that will go over the course of a couple of weeks at Next Gallery and Inside Pasternak Art Hub. 100% of anything you buy during this benefit will go to support three local Lakewood schools. So I really encourage you to go buy a piece of art and know that 100% of those proceeds are gonna be given right back to our local Lakewood schools, the art teachers and their students to buy art supplies. So that's May 28th is the kickoff. Also starting May 28th is Lakewood's Week of Inspire Arts or Inspire Arts Week. It's a citywide initiative to really encourage folks to go out and partake in the arts. And we're really excited to be back on the ground doing that in person again. So kicking off May 28th, we have a number of galleries and creative spaces in the district that are hosting exhibitions and shows. I really encourage you to get out to 40 West Arts District and throughout the city of Lakewood to really support the arts citywide. And you can find more information at the city's website or just by Googling Lakewood Inspire. We are back to hosting First Fridays, everyone, and they are starting to pick up. They're really safe to attend. We are maintaining all COVID regulations and guidelines, but it has really been a fun time over the last couple of months. So I highly encourage you to put First Fridays back on your calendar. But our next one is coming up First Friday, June 4th. We have a creative reuse show. It's all about found objects and different ways to use recycled materials. Artist Sean Doherty will also be doing a free family-friendly kid craft outside our gallery and throughout the district over the course of the evening. So again, that's first Friday, June 4th, between 6 and 9 p.m. And also, I just want to give a shout out to Lakewood Arts. Their annual garden tour will be held on June 19th this year. If you aren't familiar with Lakewood Arts, they are Lakewood's oldest continuously operating arts organization. We are thrilled and honored to have them located in the heart of the district. And their garden tour is both a wonderful opportunity to see some amazing gardens and also one of the best ways to financially support Lakewood Arts. So I encourage you to go buy your tickets today. You can find those just by Googling Lakewood Arts or going to their website and uh, go check out some really amazing gardens in support of one of Lakewood's oldest arts organizations. 
Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Liz. There's a lot, a lot happening. It looks sounds like uh, May 28 and in, in June. It, it's a, uh, it's again. People are going to be able to get out and enjoy the arts and and uh, enjoy summer. So uh, thank you for all those those events. So um, with that, we will move on to the uh, Lakewood West Colfax bid, and uh, I think uh, Kevin Yoshida is going to uh, give us an update on that. Yeah, thanks very much, Ron. I think we'll actually move our time to the to the program, and uh, we can keep uh, going on the front end here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is we have uh, West Metro Fire. Good morning. Good morning. Cassie, you're breaking up. A bit. Hmm. Cassie, I, I I think we're having a, a problem with your connection. Maybe we'll do this. Um, uh, let's let's maybe see if we can troubleshoot that for a minute or two, and we'll go to uh, Lakewood Police. Uh, I think Commander Perry may be with us this morning, and we'll, we'll try that and then come back if we can get a connection. And Cassie. Cassie said no report in the chat, Ron. Oh, okay, okay. Ron takes care of that. Uh, do we have uh, someone with Lakewood Police with us this morning? Yes, Commander Perry's here. Good morning. Give you a brief update on things that are happening in the police department. Uh, just wanted to let you know that the homeless navigator program that we have is seeing signs of progress. Uh, from March through December last year, we were able to provide permanent housing to 17 individuals. Uh, the CAT unit, the community action team was able to place 65 individuals in shelter placement. They were able to place five individuals into substance abuse programs, and they reunited, reunited five individuals with families that had been living out of state. So I think that's a pretty good start to the program for the uh, homeless navigators. Uh, just to let you know that the Colorado courts put out a memo yesterday saying that all courts will still remain with a mask requirement, as will the Lakewood Municipal Court until further notice. The state courts put a date on it of June 18th. The uh, municipal courts will um, keep us updated, but that for now they're still going to require mask mandates. Uh, we were authorized a class of 15 recruit agents that will start the police academy on uh, in July. And we got a report last week from our uh, Narcan program coordinator for the police department. He reported in 2020 that there were 26 doses of Narcan administered by Lakewood police agents, and they had a success rate of 23 reversals. So that's that's pretty good. A number of those people without this program would have surely lost their lives. And that's it from the police department. Okay. Thank you, Commander Perry. Thank you for being here. Uh, before we move into our, our formal program, I, I just want to give a quick shout out. We have a, a WCCA board member, uh, Todd Lansing, uh, who contracted COVID and has been, uh, uh, he's been in the hospital. Uh, we're keeping tabs on him. Uh, he's on the road to recovery, but uh, I'm sure he would appreciate your prayers. So uh, just a, a shout out to Todd because uh, he he we we've missed him the last couple of months, but he's an important part of, of WCCA. So I just wanted to kind of let people know that we're 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 keeping tabs on on Mr. Lansing. Um, with that, uh, we're going to start into the program. And uh, first up, uh, we're excited. We have Ashley Verville with us. Uh, from Ed Perlmutter's office, uh, and Ashley is the Director of Communications and Outreach for Congressman Perlmutter. Uh, she's based here in Colorado, works up in the, the Diamond Hill office, uh, oversees press and communications operations for both uh, 
Colorado and the and the DC office of Congressman Perlmutter. Uh, she's a Colorado native. Um, she previously served as a communications director for the San Diego Regional Chamber of Commerce uh, and is a graduate of Emerson College in uh, Boston. And Ashley's going to talk to us a little bit about the uh, American Rescue Plan and, and things that are going on in, in uh, Congressman Perlmutter's uh, world and office. So with, with that, Ashley, uh, welcome. Good morning. Thanks, Ron. Thanks for having me. Um, and thank you to the commissioners and Mayor Paul. I mean, you guys have been great partners on the county and city level. And forgive me, because I know you've, you've heard us talk about the American Rescue Plan um, several times before, but you know, there's a lot in there. Um, and so I, I appreciated the, the invite from Ron to come chat with you all about it um, as we're kind of seeing it you know, come to fruition here. So um, it was enacted in mid-March. Um, and it's, um, you know, it's about $1.8 trillion in relief as we kind of emerge from the, the COVID pandemic. So there's a lot in there for individuals, families, businesses, communities. You know, you've got, you've got the $1,400 direct payments to individuals and dependents, which should have all gone out um, for the most part by now. It extends a lot of the unemployment programs through September 6th. Uh, expands the tax credits for families and employers, um, $350 billion for state and local government aid, which I'll, I'll get to more um, specifics on that here shortly, um, really helped expand COVID testing and vaccine activities, uh, $40 billion for rental and housing assistance, um, and then $130 billion for, for K-12 through and $40 billion for higher education. Um, specifically what that means for our community, um, we, you, you probably saw some of the numbers come out last week and we're still kind of finalizing some of the, the final numbers, but it looks like um, Adams County will get about 100.5 million and Jeffco will get about 113 million um, with about 3.8 billion going to the state of Colorado. Um, so that's a lot of, um, of money kind of directly into the state and local governments, which is great. Um, the other kind of helpful piece of that state and local aid is that it, it has more kind of flexible uses. So it can be um, spent kind of backfilling lost revenue, which some of the previous relief programs weren't, um, weren't able to do. So I, I think that's helpful for the, for the local governments. Um, and specifically, so the, the state of Colorado will be receiving about 100% of their assistance um, this, this month, um, kind of due to our higher unemployment rate. Some states are kind of receiving it in, in different tranches, but, but we'll receive all of our money in, in, um, in kind of one block. Cities and counties are getting their funding in two different buckets. So the first half is coming this month in May. The second half will be coming 12 months later. Um, and as I mentioned, eligible uses include backfilling lost revenue, addressing negative economic impacts, health expenditures, um, and some investments are allowed in kind of water, sewer, and broadband. Um, for businesses specifically, um, you know, a, around the same time as the American Rescue Plan, there was the extension of the Paycheck Protection Program through May 31st. Um, the American Rescue Plan specifically created a new program called the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, which is really, um, you know, focused on helping restaurants and even, you know, small independent restaurants um, who may not have been able to be helped by the PPP program and, and other kind of SBA COVID programs. Um, that application portal is up and running. I think they've already um, had about 16,000 applicants be approved for funding. Um, so, and then uh, the uh, Shuttered Venue Operators Grant Program is also open and taking applications. And there's different kind of priority levels um, in terms of how the funding will, will come out. But, um, and then lastly, the, um, the target economic, Targeted Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance Program, we increase the loan amounts in that um, as part of the American Rescue uh, plan as well. So um, a lot in there. Um, I, you know, our office has been working hard to kind of try and and 
talk with our, our city officials, county officials, state officials to make sure, you know, local businesses, uh, to make sure folks are aware of all the benefits that are in the American Rescue Plan. I know, Ron, we've partnered with you several times kind of over the last year, um, specifically around the PPP program. But I guess I would just say if anyone has any specific questions on any of the benefits um, or how to access, um, how to apply, if you're having issues anywhere, I'll put my information in our, our um, district office contact information in the chat. But you know, you're welcome, please reach out at any time and, and we're here to help. Um, and then I, you know, in terms of, um, you know, there's a lot, a lot else that's been proposed by President Biden, the American Jobs Plan, American Families Plan. I think all of that is, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, negotiations and talks kind of happening right now. Um, but I, I, I expect to see more coming out on that here in the coming months. Um, I think more immediately where um, the House is working on the FY22 appropriations. Um, as Mayor Paul mentioned, we have an opportunity this year to submit, um, you know, really hear from the, the community and submit 10 projects where we kind of really want to see some investment from the federal um, government. And so those are called community project funding. Um, they're all listed on our website. I can share the, the link in the chat, but um, we basically are able to kind of, you know, submit projects for review, um, up to 10 projects. Um, and so we submitted those um, earlier in May and should know here in the next couple of weeks um, whether they will be eligible for funding. Um, so it's, it's really through local governments and nonprofits are the only eligible kind of entities um, able to to submit something. So um, those 10 projects have been submitted. We also have an opportunity this year to um, submit uh, designated projects specifically re related to infrastructure as the house works to reauthorize some of the surface transportation programs. So we've submitted seven projects um, on in kind of in that bucket as well. Um, and like I said, I can share that link in the chat so you guys can see exactly kind of where we're, we're hoping to, to get some investment into the community. Um, with that, I'm happy to, to take questions or hit on anything else, Ron, that you, you'd like me to. Ashley, that's been great. And uh, we really appreciate you, know, you being kind of plugged into what we're doing and, and, and attending our meeting and giving us that update. And, and I can see maybe we, we do this on a, you know, uh every six months or so we you know so if, if you ever feel like you've got something that's you'd like to share with us just let us know or get it uh to you know to, to katie through info at uh, westcoltex.org we, we can post it up as well so yeah that would be great and we'll get congressman perlmutter himself here too as well yeah that'd be great yeah uh, ed and i go way back so that'd be if, if he would like to show up we will we will definitely accommodate that so be wonderful thank you make that happen um yes uh, and, and thank you and, and you, you you all are part of the corridor so you know you're right there up on, on diamond hill so it's a yeah don't be a stranger thank you <laughs> um with that we'll move to the uh next item on our program agenda and we're going to have uh, vanessa come back and and uh, when we talked at the board uh she's going to do part one of uh the economic development process um, uh, because there's there's just so much that they do and, and we thought it would be good for folks to have a, a better understanding of kind of how things go through the process that uh, Vanessa and her team work on as, as economic development as part of the community. So with that, Vanessa, we'll, we'll come back to you. Great. Thanks for having me. I have a quick um, presentation to share with y'all. And we're starting with, um, as Ron said, kind of how this process works. My office gets a lot of questions about it. And I, and I know, you know, our planning counterparts and public works and building counterparts get the same questions as well. So kind of wanted to share um, some of how it works, how things come here, how they work through the system. So the first thing we're going to talk about today is the attraction process. Many of you have seen this slide before where we talk about the four main gears in economic development to include attraction, retention, expansion, 
workforce development, entrepreneurialism, and marketing and communications. The one we're going to focus on today is, is our attraction gear. So that first green gear and how we do that, what it entails, what it means. And it is a lot of things. We take into account the tenant and its specific needs. That can be a multi-hundred you know, employment office. That can be a lifestyle operation. That can be a lot of different things. But what, what is the tenant? What does it need? Is it here? Is it not here? And then using tools and information available to us and that we know to attract them here and showcase why Lakewood's special, why Lakewood can benefit them, how they can benefit Lakewood and all the markets, employment, analytics that go into making a decision that ends up in a site selection decision, a location in our city that's best for them, that fits their needs, that gets the traffic that they need, that has the parking that they need, has the employment that they need. So how all this rolls into a pretty long process that at the end of the day, hopefully um, amounts and open doors that you can either eat at, play at, or work at. So I wanted to share a couple of the things that we focus on. On the left hand of the screen are some of our targeted industries, and these match up with our employment in the city of Lakewood, targeted industries with Jefferson County and our partners across the metro, but industries that we either have high employment in, we have a high skill set in, industries that we want here, the kind of jobs that we want here, but also lifestyle industries, the industries that make things special, the industries that make Colfax, Colfax. So in addition to our large employers and the employers that we attract here and recruit here so that our so the people here have jobs, the things that you want to visit, the things that you want to go spend money at as well. So we have some targeted industries, but we also have more targeted um, efforts based on the area that we're in. So Colfax has the Colfax 2040 plan. We use this a lot to showcase that there's a vision here, that there's a vision that aligns with our zoning, that aligns with our comprehensive plan, but that this is what the community wants. These are businesses and jobs and tenants that this community will support, that they want to embrace. So we mix these two to kind of hone in our outreach efforts as we work through our attraction process. And with that, there's a lot that goes into it as as well, what is the tenant? Is the tenant even here? Is the tenant local, the tenant national? And attraction is a very long game is what I say. So in and outs now coming to Colorado, we were been in touch with in and out for years before they decided to come here. You know, I've been talking to them for the seven years that I've been at the city. Robert was talking to them for the 30 years he's been in economic development. And we do that because these are tenants and, and employers that we want here and we think that can strive here and they may not be here yet so like Aldi, Aldi's not here yet and there's a lot of interest in them coming to Colorado they're a grocery store that's zero waste focused um, a little smaller footprint a lot of people want them to come here they're not that far they're not this far west yet but we talk to them regularly so when they do decide to expand in the Colorado market they know us they know Lakewood they know the metrics they know our market they know that they can thrive here and they even know some locations that hey we want to pull the trigger on the Colorado market Vanessa has been annoying me for three years she sent us some fabulous sites let's look let's have a chat but there's a lot that goes into our focus on you know even attracting local brands national brands and these are both um, lifestyle industries just because these are often what people pay attention to the most but all of our employers too and how does that fit into the assets and the infrastructure that we have as well as what they need which leads into some of this market and demographic analysis this this ring is a one um, three and five mile ring from 1560 teller so where we would normally be at this meeting and a demographic summary of a mile from 1560 teller and we use this to showcase people what kind of employees you'll have around you, what kind of incomes you'll have around you. And this helps them make a decision on, do we have the skill sets we need to open our doors? Do we have enough people within one, three, five, ten, 10, however many miles to actually run our operation? And if we are a lifestyle op operation, are there enough people around us with enough money to sustain us in the long term? And 
you all know I can talk to you about numbers all day, but this helps us kind of hone in what kind of market they're going into. This is a snapshot, but we also have data related to assets and infrastructure. Are there adequate utilities for what you need? What do traffic counts look like? What do pedestrian counts look like? But all of these market analytics that roll into our storytelling on, this is the environment that you're going into. This is the culture and the vibe and the grit that is West Colfax or Alameda or whatever part of town are pitching them on. But here are the metrics to here's the data and the facts on the kind of environment they're going into that's going to prove that we as a community can sustain your business. And then kind of the last part of this is site selection. And, you know, after I've charmed them for three years, maybe they're ready to make a site selection decision. And that can be a lot of different things. Do we have the land for them to either tear something down or build something new, like Code of Metals did here on the on the left, where they went in new, they built completely ground up, they designed their entire building from the ground up, or do we have the assets and the infrastructure to allow for adaptive reuse and tenant finish like Space Today did. But part of this process is finding the right spot, the right spot that meets all of their metrics, but also all their infrastructure. As I've mentioned earlier, utilities, sidewalks, parking, if you need access to highways, depending on what your business does, but finding the right spot with the right assets and right infrastructure for this. So there's a lot of moving parts because in addition to all this, you need a tenant that's willing to expand. You need a tenant that's ready and able to expand that has the financial backing and financial capital to expand with the employees, you know, in the nearby area to expand with the, with the people that are going to buy them. So there's a lot of moving parts and it takes just quite frankly, a, sometimes a very long time, but how do we do this? How do we kind of focus on these efforts? And one is conferences and site selection. So you've heard us talk about, we've gone to ICSC Recon, we've gone to regional conferences. So this is us meeting the tenants where they're at. They all come to this space, we pitch them on Lakewood. This could be our first time meeting them. This could be our 15th time meeting them. But this is us meeting these tenants and these businesses where they're at to further highlight Lakewood and why they should come here, have you know maybe not the first conversation where it's an overview, but the more detailed conversation on, hey, within a mile, here's how many residents have opened, here's how many businesses have opened, here's the infrastructure that's going in, here's what Excel is doing, here's the road overlays, and having those more detailed conversations that's going to highlight, here's how we're also investing in our community and why we want you to as well. And then we do the opposite. So we partner with our counterparts across the metro to bring site selectors in. The people that help businesses and large employers make site selection decisions, we bring them to us. We highlight the region, we highlight what assets we have, we show them around, we show them the culture and the people. And we do this on a region because people make decisions on a region. So when we do one or three, five miles, you saw that five miles is reaching Arvada and Denver, and that's what people look at. They don't look at our boundary lines, they look at the region around them and what's going to feed into them. So we partner locally, we partner regionally, to help showcase all that our assets have to offer. And we bug people a lot. We talk about relationships a lot in, in our business. That means we're at small events, we're at big events, we're networking. We have strong relationships with our real estate community. Oftentimes a broker of our friend of ours knows that someone's expanding before we do, but when our brokers know us, they know our infrastructure, they know our assets, they can highlight Lakewood to their client being like, hey, Talk to Vanessa and her team, talk to Robert, talk to Katie or Laura. They are fabulous and they have what you need and they have highlight space A, B, and C. And so knowing our, our brokers, knowing our property owners and what they're trying to fill in their spaces and working together to highlight our assets, keeping these relationships and keeping their relationships once they're here. So we attracted someone in. Well, next time they want their second location, we want their second location to be in Lakewood too. So keeping those relationships alive, sitting on panels, being forward, communicating with people, that's how we get to meet people. That's how we put Lakewood first. And then we have a lot of tools that can help us too. CoStar is a real estate group. Um, Retail Lease Track is a group that helps highlight exactly what the tenant needs. So something that I talked about earlier with we need X, Y, and Z square footage on a corner or a pad site or what have you. And this business analyst helps us create pleasant to look at 
market analysis for the people that are not like me that don't want the nitty gritty they want icons and snapshots right but these tools help us keep everything aligned they help us respond quickly they help us respond accurately to requests and at the end of the day it's about consistent communication with the relationships and the partners that we have so we have our news blast here looking at lakewood and our community profile and these are just three examples of how we do this but we do a lot of emails, a lot of meetings, cold calls, phone calls, but staying in pretty consistent communication with decision makers, with retailers, with employers, with the people that we are going to work with throughout this process to help bring employment here, to help bring uses here. And it's just constant, making sure that people know the latest and the greatest in Lakewood, that they know the latest and the greatest in the spot that they're most interested in. They know what assets and infrastructure improvements are available to them. And it's me just bugging them a lot, but it, um, and then one of the other things we end up bringing in are what resources do we have to help them that's going to make their decision to locate here all that much better. So one, you hear me talk about a lot is the enterprise zone. You're going to, you're going to locate here in the city of Lakewood and in Jefferson County. And these are some benefits you're going to get from doing so, which makes the decision you're making to locate here, even that more attractive. Things like the Opportunity Zone, which same thing, the goal is to help encourage investment. So into the, if you invest in these areas, here are the benefits that you get. Urban renewal, same thing. Here are the, there are certain benefits that you could get in an urban renewal area. And then last, some of these programs that we've talked about last month, but all of these things, once we attract them here, once we get them hooked on Lakewood, these are tools and resources that businesses can take advantage of that make their decision to move to the city of Lakewood that much more sweet of a deal. So that was super quick part one on kind of how, how we work through attraction, how it's a long process, all the moving parts that go into it. But that's, that's kind of how we focus our efforts. That's how we highlight the businesses that we want to come here, both from an employment standpoint and a lifestyle standpoint but attracting those that will benefit our community and that our community wants to embrace, but those that our community can also highlight and, and make shine as well. These are some of the ways we communicate as well. And we do not have a new staff picture yet um, because of Corona. So here's our, our fabulous four person team and my contact information as I whiz through that. Are there questions I can answer now? Yes, Vanessa, I have one. This is Dave Ruckman. Hi, Dave. Uh, I found that presentation very helpful. Bringing it back to the corridor and wearing my hat with the Applewood Valley Association Board, I'd like to ask if your office has gotten any calls from the owner of Westland, um, RCG, about some of the demographics or about ways in which they can rethink their investment and their plans with Westman, or alternately, have there been any other potential developers out there interested in the Lakewood or the larger Westside slash Jeffco market who have approached Lakewood's economic development team saying, show me what you have. I might be interested in this Westland property or in a more complicated development property like that. In other words, what interest have you seen regarding Westland? Sure. I know it's a little complicated, Vanessa, but you're up to it. Thank you. Sure. So short answer is yes. We've talked to the owners of the inline at Westland, and as the mayor said, RCG, we've been talking to Sarah Taj, who owns the former Sears portion of that shopping center. And we've also been in talks with the owners of Westland Plaza, which is the King's shopping center just to the west. And we've been having conversations with them in general on some of the changing demographics out there. The fact that within half a mile of Oak Street Station, you've added, I don't know, close to 2,000 units in the last couple of years. That is a, a change in demographics that we can provide to them that doesn't necessarily show up in databases, right? Databases, census are historically delayed. So us being on the ground and being able to add that data to the conversation helps change the conversation because we're like, here's all the tenants that have gone in. Here's how this area is changing. In addition to that, here are the investments that have gone in by people other than you, right? So, you know, overlays and in city infrastructure programs, utility infrastructure, 
But this is where the development highlights map comes in handy as well, because I can just send them that link and say, and here's all the investment that's gone in around you to highlight that this is a focus area and this is an area that people are interested in. Um, so short answer is yes, we have been having those conversations. As I've said, some of this just takes some time and there's a lot of due diligence that's involved on the investment side, just because if you're gonna be investing a couple hundred million dollars even, or even a couple million dollars, you wanna make sure you're making the right investment, right? So when situations change, there's an there's a additional due diligence period that ends up happening. So now that you know, some of the ownership structure has changed out there, the options of what they can and can't do are different. So we go back to the drawing board of like, all right, what can we do now? What fits with our zoning? What fits with the comprehensive plan? What fits the 2040 plan that people are going to embrace, right? Because no one wants to build anything that people aren't going to visit, right? And so we kind of go back through, all right, here's what people want, right? Here's what we can help you build. Here's what's allowed. And we have a lot of those conversations um, as we kind of go through the iterative process that is attraction and development, quite frankly, but. Thank you, Vanessa. All right, anything else? I talk Sorry fast, I know. Sorry about that. What I'm hearing is you all are so fully equipped when someone is interested in Lakewood or interested in the, you know, the Colfax corridor with the studies and the resources and the demographics and the, the current information you can bring to the table. Um, and it seems like you know, our job is to make sure that the people that are already you know, in business and living in the corridor are also aware of that too, because it just seems like there's some tools and resources that you know your office has that you know if someone's doing business and they're trying to figure out whether to expand or you know kind of refocus their business whatever it might be that you, you all can be of help to them so yeah and all four of us know all of Lakewood um, but part of the reason why we kind of hone in a little bit is I can speak to a lot of the character, right? And I've been here for long enough now that I can speak to some of the history, I can speak to the grit, I can speak to the process of the 2040 plan, but having us a little focused on the ground helps us speak to these people as we attract them to the, the characters of these different parts of town and kind of what they're gonna get in each, each section. Yes, the, the character of West Colfax, but we'll leave it at that. Thank you, thank you for, for part one, and we look forward to part two because I know there will be a part two at some point when we it's appropriate to schedule it. So, thank you for what you do, and thank you for what you do for the WCCA board. Uh, next on our program, we have uh, Stefan Karg, who's the program manager with Sprout City Farms, and he's going to talk to us today about the opportunities in the Montair Park uh, community farm and some things related to that. Cool. Oh. Ron, thanks so much. And thanks everyone for having me today. This is my first one. I've just started with Sprout City Farms about three weeks ago. So I'm very quickly learning everything, but loving being here and loving being part of Sprout City Farms. So I'm going to start off by putting my contact info in the chat to begin with, in case there's anything that I, you know, anyone has a question about. Um, please go ahead and shoot me an email, send me a text, call me anytime. Um, that is my cell phone, which is dangerous, but I don't mind at all. So um, and before I actually pull up my presentation, I'd love just to give everyone a quick kind of rundown of what Sprout City Farms is before I dive into what we're going to talk about today. So um, Sprout City Farms is a local nonprofit that focuses on urban farming um, and education around urban farming. So getting other people who want to either start their own farms, want to learn more about how to do that, what the process are, even just get your hands dirty. We love that. We love bringing people in to be able to do that. Um, and then we also uh, kind of the second half of our, of our organization is focused on food access and bringing food to um, those who are underrepresented, those who need food, those who, um, you know, maybe don't get the healthy, nutritious food that is being grown right down the street from where they live. So we have three farms total. Um, we've grown four over the years, but we started off with uh, the Denver Green School in Denver. Um, it's the, it was the first farm to cafeteria program in the state of Colorado. And it was also one of the first farms on a school property. Farms wise, there's lots of gardens, but farms uh, is a very important distinguishing factor there. And then also we have um, our, our second farm is in Montero Park, which is right down the street for most of us here in Lakewood. 
Um, and it's been there for quite some time now. We've grown a little bit more. We used to have just kind of one area. Now we kind of sprawl up the hill if anyone's been to Montero Park before. Um, but it's a great farm. We have half of that, half of that entire farm is actually for education. We call them incubator plots. Um, and then the other half is all for just our CSA and actually giving food back to the community. So we also opened one at the Dahlia campus, which is a Denver mental health area. Um, they were able to take over that farm entirely on their own. So while we helped them get started, it is now their farm, but we helped build it. And then most recently, we've actually just started one up in Longmont underneath solar panels, which is something called agrovotalics. Um, and it's growing agriculture, growing food, growing any sort of produce underneath solar panels and kind of utilizing those micro cultures and those micro climates that exist there. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now so we can get this presentation going. I also am currently, I think I told Katie this, my, my partner broke her femur a couple weeks ago. And so we were at the doctor's this morning. And so I am uh, bouncing back and forth from a couple different things. Okay. Oh, oh. Always the wrong button. There we go. Awesome. So um, we just have a couple updates about the Monero Park Community Farm. This picture right here is actually um, of, hopefully everyone can see that, I believe. Yeah, awesome. Um, so this is actually peas that we got planted. We did transplant peas, so they're a little leggy in this picture, but we also uh, underseeded with seed as well. So they're looking really, really good, especially after all this weather we've been having and lots of them, so much moisture, followed by these beautiful spring days. Um, other things that are just kind of happening around the farm before we really get into our opportunities. We got our alliums planted the other day. So all of our onions, shallots, um, scallions, um, all of our different alliums are all planted, which love this weather a lot. Um, and they're all the like little just blades of grass at this point. Um, like I said, our, our peas, even beets and chard, which is this picture kind of down off to the side over here. This is, I believe that's chard. And further down in that row, there's some beets. We also have a huge strawberry patch that actually just got planted this year. We've never had one before, but we're hoping that we'll be able to do smoothies at our farm stand. So if you're ever able to come by our farm stand up at the concession stand at Monair Park, we would love to make you a smoothie. Um, and then other cold season stuff like our lettuce and other greens have been planted. Um, for anyone that's been there before, we do have some beehives, which is really cool. In the past, we've only had about three that have run at a time. Um, and we have this really cool partnership with the uh, Butterfly Pavilion to where they actually come down and manage part of their hives down here at our farms. Um, and I think they're part of a research project. We're not entirely involved as far as just giving spaces is what we do. But um, they also, the person that helps out with that has really been wanting to have other people come in as well to start kind of having more of that educational incubating process. Um, and so we actually were able to open up three new spots this year. So we have six hives that are, three of them are community hives. It's kind of like having a community garden plot. You, you want to have a hive, but you live in an apartment or maybe you know, your neighbors don't want it to be in the fly zone of a, of a bee. Um, going to get pollen and nectar. Um, you can come to our farm, which is really an ideal place to have a bee, a beehive anyway, because of the amount of pollination that can go on. Um, but yeah, so we have three people that are joining us this year um, from the Colorado Bee Keeping Association. So really excited to have that. Um, and then also all of our seedlings, this picture here and also what's behind me in my uh, image. Um, we partner with the Warren Tech School um, Warren Tech High School and the Acres program. And so all of our seedlings are in their greenhouse. A lot of those are theirs as well. Some of those flowers in the back, but all those tomatoes and peppers you see at the front, those are all ours. And it's not quite ready yet. I'll keep looking outside, which is why it's off to the side, but um, we're getting there. We're almost ready for tomatoes and, and uh, peppers and things. So um, now just some of our actual like updates on what we're doing with food access. So in the past, traditionally, we've been able to donate anywhere from 30 to 40% of our, the food that we produce from all of our farms, two different food access programs like SNAP and WIC um, and other various programs around the state that we were a part of. Um, and through COVID um, and all, through the need that we just saw within our community, we were able to figure out how to get 55% of our harvest to go towards food access programs. So um, that's pretty amazing. Um, I, I think as someone who's new to this organization, that that was it's a big jump from 40 to 55%. We do about 80 to 90 shares total, uh, including what we would call like our market shares or our more um, full price shares, I guess. And then all of our food access shares combined is about 90. So 55% of those is pretty great. Um, we do still have SNAP CSA shares available. So if, again, please do reach out to me through email. Um, give me a call. Um, I'd love to help anyone get signed up who wants to get our delicious, amazing produce. 
Um, we do pickups on every um, every Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. at Monair Park. Um, and we can also do some delivery if someone's not able to make that. So um, we also have 10 WIC shares available, which all of these shares go pretty quickly. So please do reach out to me if you, if you are someone who wants one of these, you know someone who wants one of these awesome shares, um, please reach out. Um, so we'll also have farm stands. Farm stands will start up when we start having enough food to produce, but um, we always will have a, a farm stand. It's gonna be on Thursdays at the Monterey Park concession stand. That's our main farm stands. But we also have this really cool thing that was built for us last year. We have a mobile uh, veggie mobile. So it's actually a, a pedicab bike that's been converted. It's got all these cool cabinets and a cold box and a huge trailer that we can uh, haul behind us if we need more equipment. And we can actually go to different places in the neighborhood. And because it's an e-bike, we don't have to work as hard to get there, which is nice. Um, we currently go to the Head Start on 11th Avenue, the flats at Two Creeks. Um, and if anyone has any other ideas, we, we can't necessarily bike like 10 miles away and then 10 back. Well, the pens actually we probably could. But if anyone has any awesome ideas of where would be a great place to set up our farm stands, um, it's all suggested donation based. So um, we try to, first of all, market our prices fairly and what value is across the state um, so that we're not undercutting farmers, but we're also not charging too much for food for um, anyone who you know can't necessarily go to Whole Foods to buy your food. We're kind of right in that middle area. Um, and then we're also suggested donation. We accept SNAP uh, double up bucks, um, all of the things. So we really just try to get out into the community so that we can get our food to people the best we can. So we're looking for a couple more locations to bring our veggie mobile because it is so mobile. It's so easy to move around. Um, so please do email me if you have some awesome ideas. I was in the Two Creeks community meeting uh, on Saturday and we had some good ideas in there. So um, just kind of putting everything together, trying to find the right place. Um, okay, we are also hiring, which is, um, I would love to announce that here. So we have one specific position we would love to hire, which is our community navigator position. It kind of follows a Prematoris model in the healthcare system, but instead of healthcare, we were looking at food access. So we would love a community member who wants to work with us over the summer to help us run that, that farm stands and that veggie mobile, which is, I think, like the, one of the coolest things is you'll actually get to drive that thing around. You'll have to fight me for it, but we'll get to drive it around town and park at different places. Uh, but you'll also be helping people get signed up for SNAP. You'll be helping to spread our word um, and the word of food, food access and food justice to everybody around. Um, we would love this person to kind of help reach into the community more. We, we are already so much in the Two Creeks neighborhood around us and the West Colfax neighborhoods, um, but we would love to be even more involved. We've been at Monarch Park quite some time now and um, we're on the 40 West Art Line, which is also fantastic. So. We just feel like we're in this really prime spot to be able to do even more. And so we'd love to have someone from the community be able to help us do that. Um, so we also have farm internships. So every year we, part of the education model, we'd love to bring people on who want to learn um, how to farm, who want to learn anything there is to do um, about farming. We even take, um, if someone's really interested in just building things or, or just really wants to work on irrigation, like we can, we can tailor internships do what people are interested in and what we're capable of doing on the farm. So um, we do also have a paid position as well um, that's open. Um, but a lot of our internships are really just trying to grab that experience for the summer and we're really flexible on time. So please do reach out to me if you'd like to be an intern for the summer, if you know someone who would be a really good fit for either the community navigator position or farm interns. Okay, uh, so we'd love your help with some things. And these are some of the kind of more opportunities that we have. So, um, let me see real fast. Um, so we're going to be having a bunch of communities around um, who want to have events at our, at, our, at our farm. So this picture down here at the bottom is actually of our um, one of our farm dinners. I think that one might be at the Denver Green School, but farm dinners at Monarch Park look very similar. So we'll start having farm dinners very soon where for a little bit of a, they're more of our fundraiser idea, but we're going to bring people in for farm dinners. We usually bring on a chef from the community um, who's going to use most of the harvest, anything that's ready to go at the time, vegetable wise, as well as locally donated meats and cheeses and breads. Um, we put together a really beautiful night and usually have live music. Um, and then all of us farmers get to be wait staff and we're quite good at it. I think, um, we get to see us, um, look a little bit better. Actually, I'm not all farmed out today, but we'll, we'll get all nicely dressed up for y'all. Um, we're also going to have a couple of picnic picnics this summer throughout the summer. That's going to be with music. So. Um, we'll try to spread the word out through these different associations. Um, and then also, if anyone walking by the farm, we'll have information up on the bulletin boards as well around the park. But we've, we're going to try something this year where we're just going to have an unplugged 
um, musician that might just wander through the farm and people can come set up a picnic um, blanket and sit with your family and just kind of enjoy the night around the farm, maybe give some farm tours. So we're still exploring these ideas. And same with food in the communities is really interested in having an, a group with us. And I have on here, would you like to be a part of it and plan it? If you would, please reach out to me. It's normally we have two big community events in the year. We have one in the spring and one in the fall around harvest. And with COVID, everything's kind of just thrown off a little bit. And so this is really our first kind of dipping our toes back into it. So if anyone would love to be a part of this event, please do reach out to me, um, send me an email. Um, as of right now, it's really just going to be kind of a, a great day to spend time on the farm. Um, have a couple of different groups from the food and communities group there. Uh, the Two Creeks neighborhood, I believe, has already signed up to do popcorn, I hope, uh, which is why I have, I've heard about a popcorn machine on there. Um, so yeah, please do reach out to me if you'd love to help out with any of our events. Um, also, if there's any carpenters out there or any organizations or businesses that would love to be a part of this, um, we built this shade structure that's in this middle picture here a couple of years ago. Um, and it's been working out great. It's right next to where we keep most of our, uh, where we used to have all of our cold stuff. Um, and we would keep things chilled over there, but we actually just recently got power hooked up. So this other building right off here to the side that's unpainted, it's actually two things we'd like to have happen. First of all, we'd love for someone to paint it and I'll be reaching out to Alexis and Amber um, more about that soon um, with the city of Lakewood. But um, I'm also looking for a shade structure to come off of this here. So this is our new cold bot or our cold, storage area where we're going to keep things to make sure that our tomatoes don't ripen too quickly after we harvest them. Um, and having a shade structure over the top of it that's pretty similar to this one will help us do more classes, will help our farm dinners be a lot more um, shaded and it, on those really hot nights where the sun hasn't quite gone down yet. Um, so yeah, if anyone would, please reach out to me. Please send me an email, shoot me a text, give me a call. Um, and again, like I was saying earlier, we'd love to hear from you all if there's any other spots you want us to bring our veggie mobile. Here's a picture of it right here. Without the trailer, the trailer is also extremely cool. So I'm bummed that it's on this picture, but um, here's our, our petty cab veggie mobile. So okay, we, thank you. We yeah. need to move on. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm so and that was actually here. Let's say I get to talking. So my last slide here. Thank you so much, Ron. Thanks for cutting me off. To we'll get in the hold off the stage, but thank, thank you. you all so much for having me. Good info, Stefan. Yeah, sorry, sorry, we're we're running a little long today, and we. So, no, you're uh, totally fine. But, but I, it's, it's a cool I, time of year. It's, it's good to see what you're doing there. Um, absolutely. And folks, we're going to do our best to get this wrap. We may run a, a few minutes long, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll move it forward. We're, we're going to skip our tip of the month and move that to June. So, um, but next on our, our program, we have uh, Roger Wadnall and and. Uh, some others from uh, the city of Lakewood that are gonna to talk to us about the pedestrian safety project. So with that, we'll move right to, to Roger. Great, thank you, Ron. And we can be pretty quick. We'd like to be at you know this meeting on a regular basis, just to kind of give everybody a, an update on the project. It's <clears throat> $12.5 million grants. You look at safety between Sheridan and Wadsworth on Colfax and make significant pedestrian improvements. Um, and Kuchenmeister will, Kuchenmeyer will, um, I'll get your name right one of these times, uh, <laughs> will give an update on the process, the public outreach process. But I wanted to mention that, um, and that's going to go on through, throughout the year, but we're, we issued the request for proposals for actually the, the consulting firm to design the project. And that will play out. So we, we hope to get that firm under contract in um, July. And then we'll really be getting into a lot of the, the hard design decisions and things that we, the back and forth that we really need to do with the community and the businesses. But Anne will talk about the public process, which will feed into the design. So I'll stop there and just turn it over to Anne. Awesome. This is Ann Kuchenmeister over here. <laughs> um, I know it's a really wonky last name. Yeah, uh, and then we all the time too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I added a D. Um, anyways, uh, we do have a couple of slides. If you guys could, I'm sorry if I. And no. you muted yourself. Thank you. Sorry, I was just jumping right in. Um, we uh, would like to invite everybody to um, join us tomorrow at um, our pu public meeting, first public meeting for this project. We have two opportunities to join. 
And I think we have a couple slides maybe um, coming up to share here with those details. But on the website, um, we do have um, registration available. So the first meeting will be at noon. And then the second opportunity will be at 5.30 p.m. Again, this is tomorrow, uh, the 20th. Both meetings are exactly the same. So pick whichever one works better for your schedule. And you, we hope you'll join us. We do have um, interpretation offered during the meetings in Spanish. So if you know any Spanish speakers, or you have any connections to the Spanish speaking community, we'd appreciate uh, anybody's help sharing the word with them. On the website, we do have a flyer with information in Spanish about the project, and we have um, registration instructions also in Spanish. So the link is there for registration. It's lakewoodtogether.org backslash West Colfax. Um, we'll be providing a description of the project, project timeline. Um, we'll talk about some of the existing conditions data. And then really the big um, exciting, two exciting pieces of this, I think, are that we're gonna provide a summary um, if you could go to the next slide, of the about 600 respondents that we got. Um, so we will be sharing out those results and what we heard from people. And if you can uh, carry on to the next slide. Um, we did hear that, you know, one of the key questions was, how do you feel by each mode of travel? And we saw something pretty consistent with, I think, people's experience, but 75% of people said that they feel unsafe walking while 67% of respondents said they felt safe driving. So you can just kind of see that imbalance come out that matches with the current design, as you see from that lack of sidewalk right there. So we're gonna be talking about how the priorities and um, safety considerations, what those are gonna look like with design. Um, and in the next slide, please. Um, we will be sharing out some visual preference survey um, sneak peeks. So we're going to be looking at some key design elements that came out of people's priorities and talking about those as well. Lighting, pedestrian buffers, median elements, and bus stop amenities is four key things that we're really seeking input on um, to inform the design and help craft that in the next phase that Roger spoke about. So again, please join us tomorrow, the 20th, noon or 5.30 p.m. And please register um, by visiting the website and again, yeah, you'll see it's also on WCCA. However you get there is great. And we hope you will join us tomorrow. Um, we'll love to have you. So thanks. And thanks, Vanessa, for letting me know I was muted. Okay. Thank you both. And, and that's, that's tomorrow, as, uh, the, uh, so as Anne emphasized. So go to the website, sign up, pick one, and, and participate. So well done. And, and we will continue to get updates from you all as this uh, continues to move forward. It's an important part of the corridor. Thank you. Um, we're gonna jump right to uh, Kevin Yoshida and Bill uh, Marino on the, uh, the news about some, some, some really cool news. I'll just turn it over to you two and let, let you run with it. Thanks so much, Ron. Uh, yeah, just a, a quick uh, uh, update on the 2040 plan. Um, know that we're uh, definitely involved in all the uh, West Side conversations and the, as uh, the Economic Development Department and Vanessa mentioned and uh, Mayor Paul mentioned, we are uh, anxious uh, for uh, meetings to uh, to attend meetings both on the RTD property and and the RCG owners and uh, stay tuned. We'll uh, definitely be polishing the uh, 2040 plan um, and make that available to everybody. Um, the big news uh, uh, to share is um, we have we have we bought a building <laughs> as you saw in the the newsletter. So uh, the bid board has prioritized this for for a long time. Uh, thanks to, to to Mr. Marino for working hard on this since the holidays. Thanks to our our uh, seller Broad Street for uh, making the opportunity available. Thanks to First Bank uh, for being our lender, and we're really excited. This this meeting's a perfect example. There things are popping on the corridor, and uh, the bid board uh, prioritized uh, our own um, uh, sustainability and longevity as part of that to help uh, this organization and 40 West to continue to serve its mission and all of our uh, community partners. We felt that was fundamental and important. So um, we are, uh, you'll start to see activity at the uh, uh, Drumstick building. It'll have a new life soon. Um, uh, we're working with uh, Callahan Construction to get that going. So I think there's a roll off already there and uh, uh, we'll start to uh, see uh, a revitalization and activities uh, soon. So uh, stay tuned. We'll provide regular updates to, to everybody here. Okay. 
uh, uh, there's a press release in the meeting page if you want more info. So click on the press release uh, for more info. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, thank you. I'll turn it back to you, Ron. Okay, thank you both. Yeah, thank, thanks. Exciting news. That's going to be fun to watch that uh, develop over the, the, the coming months. And I know there's you've been doing a lot of planning in the background for kind of hit, hit the ground running. So uh, exciting news. Uh, we're going to go to the community updates. I think we're, we're almost back on track. So uh, thank you all for the, the brevity and uh, with, because there's so much good information to share. And I'm just going to run through and ask for uh, the, the, these uh, 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 community partners. Uh, anyone from the Action Center here today? Good morning, I'm Tani Brown here, uh, Marketing Manager for the Action Center. Uh, we've got a couple of things going on, so I'll keep them brief. Your kids may be counting down the days until they are out of school, but we are counting the days until they go back. Our annual school supply distribution will be happening in early August, and we are gonna need brand new school supplies to make that happen. So as you are out and about this summer, please keep that in mind and pick up a few of those items and drop them off at the Action Center anytime. Our donation doc open Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from two to three, so we'd love to see. We're also always in need of uh, food, so you can also drop that off. And we are accepting summer clothing right now that is washed and cleaned and free of state and tears. So we'd love to have those donations and we certainly appreciate your generosity. Uh, but more excitingly, in just two days, we are having our annual premiere event where action matters. This year it is a virtual event. We have lots of fun components like a celebrity chef. Um, you'll also get to hear from some of the leaders um, of the big corporations in the community here in Lakewood. So please feel free to join me at Where Action Matters. I will put the registration link in the chat box. And that's all we have for the Action Center today. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, Lakewood Arts. Leslie. Leslie, are you here? I'm okay. Here. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's nice, okay. nice to be back with uh, WCCA meetings. Um, in our gallery right now, we have Tales of the Painted Cats for the Cat Care Society. It's every two years, and there are some awesome, awesome cats there. If you have a chance, please stop by. We also have um, the Flat Cats. Those are um, paintings of cats. This year they've also included dogs. So it's really a, a sensational show and something that you shouldn't miss. Um, in our Acorn Gallery, we have the annual Colorado Mosaics Artist Show and that runs through May 28th. Recently, we had a berry garden class that was a great success. Uh, we had seven different individuals in there and they made little berry gardens and they were really, they turned out just awesome. Um, May 22nd, we have field journal journaling at Four Mile Historic Park and that's been a really successful series of classes. Inspire Art Week is coming up and we have um, planned a bunch of different demos. Uh, save the date annual garden tour. Liz spoke about that um, just briefly. It's June 19th. Tickets are $20 a person in advance. Um, we have seven new and exciting gardens. And it's something that most people look forward to every year. And I know we're all looking forward to seeing some bright colors and pretty gardens. awful weather that we've been having. Last but not least, and certainly the most exciting for us is that we will be joining 40 West in the new drumstick building. Woohoo! Um, that's about all I have. Hope that um, you stop by the gallery. We are open now from Wednesday through Sunday, 11 to five every day. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Leslie, and we'll go to Two Creeks Neighborhood. Uh, Two Creeks had, had their um, our meeting last uh, Saturday and had the farm um, at, the, at our meeting. So that was fun because they're in our neighborhood. Um, we're having a 10th Avenue cleanup. And so that's basically what we've been doing.
we didn't even have a developer in our meeting. So that was very different because it's been every month we've had some developer coming and appearing. Thank you, Kathy. And Kathy is also a, a board member for WCCA. Uh, so thank you for your efforts there. Uh, Iber neighborhood. Yes, um, we are meeting tonight um, per Zoom. And uh, we have uh, put together a community outreach program. We're gonna start with uh, June 12th, Saturday, and we're gonna do just a little gathering in the park. We've commissioned a brass quartet to play. So that'll be uh, Saturday, uh, June 12th. And uh, that'll be at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We're gonna uh, attempt to go out on our own for uh, National Night Out. And we're going to do that at Sunset Park. And then we have a third one that is scheduled in August for Ritchie Park. So we're trying to reach out to the community. Um, if anybody wants to join us tomorrow night, uh, please reach out to any one of us. You can reach out to me. But we will be meeting. And again, June 12th in Holbrook Park. And that is about all I have. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you for being here. Uh, Morse Park. Do we have anyone from Morse Park? Applewood Valley. Hi, Ron. Uh, this is Dave Ruckman. Uh, we haven't had a board meeting in the last few months. I think we're going to have one in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Mary Ann Ortiz, the president, and I have been focused on Westland. And we recently reached out and had a Zoom meeting with Bill and Kevin to talk about how to safeguard the future of Westland. Bill, I know, talked to the mayor. And as the mayor mentioned, He's waiting to hear back with some sort of opportunity for the owner, uh, RCG, to come out here and meet with stakeholders and begin to put together some sort of a plan to renovate and get viable again Westland Shopping Center. So um, we're staying in touch with Bill and Bill with the mayor, and we're hoping to get some progress on this. I mean, nothing is not good in this situation. We'd like to have a stakeholder meeting and the mayor is facilitating that. Did I get that right, Bill? Yes, you did. All right, good. Thank you, Dave. Sure. Thanks, Dave. And I know that's the whole catalyst for the, you know, the, the King Supers to the West and the RTD property. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Daniels Welchester. Good morning. This is Diane Duffy. Um, our board has met and we have decided to hold our annual picnic this year. We forego that last year because of the COVID restrictions, but we are going to have it this year. We're not quite sure what it's going to look like. It's a very large event. We usually have well over 200 people, so we do still have to be careful. But we are going to have it this year. Uh, we have a large parcel of land that has come up for sale that's never been developed in our neighborhood. And we've been contacted by realtors and developers and just anxious to see uh, what, what comes of that piece of property. And that's all for us. Okay, thank you. I can see, we're going to run about five minutes over. Uh, I promise we'll, we'll keep it brief, but I want to give everyone an opportunity uh, Lakewood Elves, uh, I think Jerry uh, Hilton is here. Yeah, I'm here and uh, what's awesome is we're opened up. We've got our Tuesday night bingos. We've got ballroom dancing on Thursday, country on Friday. The 22nd of May, we have a karaoke. We have a Memorial Day barbecue of hamburgers and hot dogs. And also want everybody aware that our public bingo is open on Wednesdays and Fridays from 11 to two. Thank you very much. And we're looking forward to seeing you at the lodge. Okay. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, West Metro Chamber of Commerce. Hi guys. Good morning. This is Madison with the West Metro Chamber. Um, I just sent my info in the chat. I'm fully vaccinated and ready for any meetings. If you have any questions for the chamber, I especially love men, Sarah. 
Um, but so I just wanted to say that few things. We have all of our programs and events are going back in person for the most part. Uh, check out our website. We have women in business, business after hours, and much more. I'm going to send two documents in the chat as well. We have a uh, May uh, events. That's that. And then also for those who are maybe alumni or interested in joining in, Leadership Jefferson County is now accepting applications for their next seating class for 20. 21 to 2022. I'm going to send the brochure and that has a link to the application as well. But hope you guys can join in. If you have any questions, like I said, can't wait to uh, see you all in person soon. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Madison. I'm, I'm particularly excited. We have uh, Thomas Keith uh, with us from uh, the Rocky Mountain uh, College of Art and Design. And, and uh, I think uh, what we're going to try to have. Uh, uh, Thomas back to, to be on the program a little further out. We put up a, a book that uh, he has authored called A, a Day in, Ar in, in RIMCAD. But uh, Tom, uh, you say, say a few words if you would. Uh, absolutely. And may I just share one picture? Would that be okay, Ron? Sure. Uh, absolutely. It still says you're sharing your screen. I'm sorry. Okay. You can do it now. Thank you, everyone. Um, as uh, was mentioned, I'm a professor at, at REMCAD. I'm, I'm here uh, speaking just for myself, not for the college. But when we were talking about frontage and development, I thought you all might get a kick out of this. This is the original entrance to the JCRS REMCAD campus. It's where the Arby's is. And, um, but this is an image that I want to share with you. This is what the original entrance to the JCRS uh, REMCAD campus looked like off of Colfax. And it was later replaced. Um, and then they moved uh, the access to Pierce. Uh, but my last sharing, and I'd love to come back and share some more uh, pictures. Uh, there's Bob Hope on the stage of the uh, Mary Harris Auditorium at REMCAD. So uh, I'd love to uh, come back and share more about the history of the campus. And thank you for inviting me. We, we will definitely have you on the program. So yeah, and, and soon. So it's great to have REMCAD back uh, in, in the community to, to be plugged in there so we can uh, hear what's happening. Um, West Colfax Kiwanis. Yes, I'll be brief, Ron. We are ready to do our fundraisers. Many of them are in person and we need help. We'd love to have uh, more folks join us for our meetings. Uh, we've just met last night, uh, first and third Tuesdays of the month. Uh, also, I'm doing uh, just a little bit of a lunch at the ranch next, tomorrow at 1130. If you'd like to hear more about Kiwanis, uh, text me, let me know. Okay, thank you, Josh, thank you. Uh, North Lakewood Advocates? No. Okay. Are there any other communities uh, that uh, that I've missed that have a, a brief word or two to share? Okay. Uh, I know uh, we, uh, Katie was going to give an update on the, the passport roundup and, and we'll do that next month just because we're a few minutes over, uh, and I think what we're going to do is, is wrap up our monthly meeting. Thank you for, for being here. Uh, as I say every time, invite someone to come next month. Uh, point them to our website. Give us information, we're, and we will, uh, we will back, be back at you on the third Wednesday of June, and have a great day and a great week, and uh, get out and about. Uh, so enjoy the day. Thank you.